Hello, I'm Bradley and welcome to my channel. Do you ever feel like you could just pick up the phone and speak to a loved one in heaven? A lot of people will. A lot of people will. And if only it could be, be that easy. Do you know, I have been so, so blessed in this life. I truly, truly have been. And I have the most incredible parents. And on that parent table are my mum, my dad and my nan. My nan is truly like a second mum to me. I lost my nan on the 31st of May, back in 2021. And do you know what? My life's never been the same since. And I think if somebody was to ask me, how do you deal with losing somebody so special and so dear and so incredible to you, and is your everything, I think the thing what I would say is that you never are truly that same person again. However, what happens is that you're left with this this absence of that love and of that person, but yet that physical, that physical sort of as you can see them and hug them and love them, it, they never ever go, but yet this existence of this kind of awareness that they're no longer with you as such in person, that kind of grief is waves and storms and it's little by little your life comes together almost like in the middle you've got that heartbreak you've got that grief and that knowledge of that that person isn't with you with me I have faith so I know my nan is always with me but it breaks my heart that I can't reach out and give her a hug and tell her how much she means to me face to face and do all those wonderful things like sharing memories and making new memories and taking wonderful sort of pictures and capturing wonderful moments and her being present at, at events and Christmas and birthday. All of those things and sometimes just the smallest of things I miss, just like her laugh and her smile, which is actually the huge things. Do you know, I so miss just telling her about things, telling her about things, what's happened. And as I say to you, my faith is everything and the Lord is a huge guidance for me. But when you lose somebody who is your absolute world, it's, it's not easy. No matter who you are, it's not easy. And do you know what? It has been over three years. It was three years this year since I lost my nan. And I can honestly, truly tell you that some days it's literally like it happened yesterday. And I think for, for many people, do you know what? I don't think you, you never, ever get over it at all. You truly, truly don't. And it's like some days, and I, I'm very, very blessed with my parents, and it's my mum's mum who we're talking about, my dear nan here. And I grew up in a bond. I grew up and, and witnessed the incredible bond they had. And I was part of that as well. I grew up in their love. So it's hard. Do you know what? It's really, really hard. And for, and I do struggle. And do you know what? Today, and it was actually last night, I had quite a, quite a sort of very, um, it's been a, a horrendous emotional week. And a lot of my subscribers will know that I will sometimes just talk and vent on my channel as almost like a virtual diary to share my experience, share what I've gone through. And if I can just share a little bit of wisdom or a little bit of motivation with somebody going through something equally as awful, um, then then that's great. And you know what? It's good for me as well. It's good for me to talk. It's good for all of us to talk. And you know what? I just felt like that I wanted to do this today because yes, it's been three years, but do you know what? It feels like that it's only been sometimes three days. Sometimes, do you know what, I can be in a store, especially this time of year, and it's the 2nd of October today. And do you know what, sometimes, so it's nearly three, three and a half years, nearly. But do you know what, sometimes I can go into a store and I can look around and I can see things my nan in the back of my mind. And they're thinking, oh, nan would like that. And me and my mum, sometimes we, we, we're very guilty of doing it and we can walk through and we can see perhaps like a garment of clothing my nan would have had, or if I'm with my mum and she's popped into a shop to grab a few things. Particularly if it's personal things, like if mum's run in a shop or something and got sort of like cosmetics or makeup items, or I don't know, something like for a hair or one thing or another, 
it's sort of like, it's just Nan. My nanny was so, so much of a glamorous lady and always will be a glamorous lady. And honestly, when she walked into a room, you would truly believe that it was a film star. And to me, she always looked stunning. She truly, truly did. And she did. She was complimented all the time. She was such an incredible lady. She had an incredible heart. She had an incredible spirit. And just the 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 air she would give off, this, this... When Nan walked into the room, it became warm. You, you, you stood up, you woke up, that it was special. And I was always in awe of that. I truly was. My mum has the same. My dad he is in the forces, so you almost stand up to attention with dad. And as I said, I've been blessed with truly incredible parents. And my nan was on that parent table, and she always will be. And as I say, my faith has got me through some really dark times. And that I'm truly, truly grateful for. It doesn't stop my heart from breaking, and for me wanting to walk into a room and just to have five minutes. Do you know, I'm unfair sometimes. Sometimes I say to my mum, and I know her heart breaks sometimes because she would give anything to have her back. And there's more times than others where that's where that's so true, isn't it? And Jack, sometimes I say to my mum, I'd give it anything just to walk back into a room and just to have her sat there and just for five minutes, just to tell her what goes on or what I've done or what's happened. Because do you know what? It would almost, no matter how old I was, you I think with a grandparent, especially when they're so dear and they're so treasured to you, you almost go back to being a child instant. And I know it's not healthy to have that in your mind at all, but it was almost like that whatever I faced, that I'd give Nan a hug and I'd tell her all about it and she'd tell me it was all going to be okay. And because Nan said it was all going to be okay, it was going to be okay and you knew it was going to be okay. And you could get through it. And it was almost like that it would just give me that contentness and it would just give me that reassurance. And I think, do you know, what? I'm 31 now and I know I'm probably being really ungrateful because I had my nan for a long time. But it was still far too soon. Isn't it just that we're always we're always wanting more, aren't we, of something good? Um, and we're selfish, aren't we? We really are. And it's almost just like that. Things come up in my life and let's be honest, as adults, we all get scared when we face things, whether it be health, whether it be decisions, have you done the right thing, if you make a mistake. And do you know what? Yes, I've got my mum and my dad and they are truly incredible and I worship the ground they walk on. But we have a busy, hectic life. And do you know what? We have a busy, hectic family. And my mum and dad have got three other sons and they've got grandchildren and they've got lives themselves and they're always incredible about taking the time out. How they fit it all in a day, I don't know. And I'm so, so close to my mum and dad. I really am their best friends to me. My nan, whether or not that was because of the stage of the life she was at, she always had the time. Do you know, she had seven children. Into a heartbreak, she lost two through illness. And my nan was a great, great, great grandmother and had over 55 grandchildren, I think. But do you know what? I think that I, myself and my brother is twins. She always seemed to sort of just have that. I don't know whether or not, but it was almost like that I was, my nan was my best friend and it was almost like that I was hers as well. I think that's the best way to put it. So it's almost like she would look for me. It's almost like that. Yeah, so that was the type of bond. Nan and I have an incredible bond. I'm not going to say had, because we have. Um, and you know, a lot of people will think, why now, Bradley? Why three years on are you doing this on your channel? But you know, I've had days where I've just wanted to pick up the phone. And I could think, you know, oh, Nan, if only you were here. Do you know, this week has been difficult. Right now, we're going through some things in this family, and um, it's a family member who is struggling, and let's just say mental health. And this week, my life has been really, really turned upside down. And it's not me for all my amazing subscribers, if you wanted to know, it's not me. But there's somebody, and I want to respect their privacy for that. But sometimes I, I just see and I just wish, and I and I think, do you know, if I could only put this person, because this person also worships and idolises my nan, 
and two had an incredible bond. And you know what? Sometimes I think, oh my goodness, if I could put you in front of her, I wonder if this would all be sorted. And I know mental health isn't as easy as that at all, as much as we all wish it could be. But you know what? It's, um, it's hard, isn't it? I think whenever you love somebody so much, you know, you miss them so much that it hurts in your chest. And, um, do you know, I don't think a lot of people say that time heals, but what if you don't want it to heal? What if you don't want that space in your heart to heal over? It's crazy, isn't it? And I hope people can relate when we're talking about this. I really, really do. Honestly, none is everything to me. She truly is. And um, lately I've seen a lot on the YouTube community around Alzheimer's and dementia. And growing up, I was always very, very close to Nan. I would always be so, so excited if my Nan would visit. And honestly, she would always come with gifts and she'd always have time and she'd take time to do games and she'd take time to play with us in the garden. And she was always there. Birthdays, I would, Christmas. She was always there. Every day from school, I would see my nan until I went to secondary school. So infants, junior school, um, I seen her every single day, every single day. Sometimes she would pick us up, my twin brother and I, she'd pick us up with my mum and we'd spend time with her every day. And just the bond and the love I grew up in from my nan. Sadly, my grandfather died when I was very, very young, only, uh, only one years of age. So. Even though I know him, I love him with all my heart, I learnt about him and of him through my nan. And um, nan and granddad were both in uh, in the forces. Um, and my nan was in the land army and my grandfather was in the army. I've got some beautiful pictures and some beautiful stories which I treasure. And you know what? Always throughout my life, my nan was a very, very strong lady. Very strong lady. Such an independent lady. And just so incredible. There's nothing she could do, she couldn't deal with. Nothing. And it would almost be like if you were going through something, if you seen if you went and seen Nan, if you spent some time with Nan, that she would get you back on your feet, she'd almost sort you out, literally sit there, have tea with her, her absolute just amazing hospitality and just the warmth and the love in her home. She had a wonderful home, she had a big home, she had a wonderful home full of all different treasures and trinkets from the years which had passed from her from her family and it was always very very lovely and you'd walk in and it was almost be like that time stood still in childhood. And as my nan uh, got to her 80s, like I remember my nan's 80th birthday and um, it still didn't face her. It didn't face her. My nan was always so much of a, of a much, much younger lady, always. And I suppose it was when she got to about 83, I think, where nan's memory started to um, not become an issue. But, for example, um, nan was just becoming a little bit forgetful. Um, and it was only very small things, and you could have put it down to age, and at the time she was looking after one of her children almost full time with an illness. And she was always very, very busy. She had four sons and three daughters, and my uncle was always always needed by Nan, always there, constantly. And so did my, my aunties and my mum. But my uncle was almost, they needed Nan in their, in their lives daily for almost reassurance in doing things, and she was so very busy. Even in her early 80s, she was busy. And Nan, as I said, had a wonderful home and she had huge gardens and she'd look after all of that, even at that age. My Nan, even, you know, the rubbish bins, the big um, rubbish bins in this part of the world in the UK, uh, the black refuge bins, very tall. My Nan was a very short little lady and, um, you know, to push all the rubbish in, she would sometimes stand upon the top and push it all down at that sort of age. And we'd always panic and worry and think, do you know what, one day if you slipped and it closed down and nobody would ever be able to find you. So you can, from that, she used to cut her own hedges and stand on a chair and mow her own lawn. And it was like a palace. She kept her house like a palace. It really, really was. And it was wonderful. And my nan and granddad always worked hard for everything they had. They weren't gifted. They certainly weren't blessed with good luck, but they were blessed with the life they had. And um, she went through hard times, but she worked super, super hard for everything she had. And she had 
she it, it was wonderful and um as i say my nan's memory started to change i think at about 82 83 and it was just small things like she'd sometimes forget herself in a place in a conversation or slipping up with people's names or she'd go and make a cup of tea and if somebody visited she would ask a question but then all of a sudden it would slip and then it slipped from her mind and she'd repeat the question and she'd repeat the question and first of all it started off as that and then all of a sudden Manan didn't just she didn't change but she seemed to become more emotional and almost a little bit very anxious, incredibly stressed. Um, and it was almost like this this lady who always handled absolutely everything. It would just take her a little bit more time to manage everything. Lennon was always the matriarch and always will be of our family, a huge family. And I almost just thought, you know what, with everything she's got to do, Nan's getting older. She doesn't look it, but she's getting older. And this is all a bit too much for her. So sometimes I'd get a little bit annoyed with some of my family members and think, you know what, just sometimes just back off. She's getting older and she needs just a bit more time and she needs to spend a little bit more time looking after herself. But, you know, with anything, as she got older and problems happened within our family, she almost had to step up and be more. So rather than relaxing and calming down in her golden years, she almost had to ramp up and step up. And in that, she became a full-time carer. And so many things that she seemed to have to take on. And at that time, she was trying to look after two houses. Um, a relative was unwell, and she was trying to look after the house as well and support that family. And it was almost like that my nan took the role of grandmother, mother, but it was almost like counsellor, um, almost like support worker. And of course, she wouldn't have changed it for the world. Not for the world. And it was just almost like that she seemed to become a little bit more tired. And do you know what? Nan used to be up for literally half four, her makeup on, never ever without her makeup, done up to the nines, as glamorous as ever, hair almost like she walked out of, not almost, always as she walked out of her hairdressers, and just glamorous and just immaculate. And do you know what? I think she'd sometimes be up to around about 11, midnight, and she'd be up for four, half five. So she wasn't getting any rest at this sort of time in her life as well. And bear in mind, she'd lost her husband. She didn't have my grandfather there. And I just see my nan starting to change. And, you know, she became more emotional. She became more stressed. And nan's, she became more forgetful. And then I think when it became that she started to... I think when she became, um, she started to forget places in conversations or she would, s I always knew when if we came back from anywhere and if we'd seen anybody in and we chatted to anybody and if Nan didn't straight away, I almost used to, she used to be able to fake that she knew the person and she could relate to the conversation. But sometimes we'd walk away from it and I'd say, Nan, who was that? And bearing in mind, and I knew everybody. And she used to start to forget who certain individuals were and with names. And you know what? At first, it was I used to think that it was just too much going on with Nan and that she needed a bit of a break. But she began to get a little bit more emotional with things and stressed. And this composed person, for all my life I, I knew, and all of a sudden just witnessed just break down in tears. And sometimes she would get a little a little bit confused at times. And um I think as time went on, from about 82 to 83, it was just steady changes. But then so I would always stay at my nan of a weekend, and we'd always have such a lovely time. But I was witnessing more and more of these sort of all, almost episodes of just my nan being so upset and so stressed. But after a short while, she would, she'd be able to get herself together. And she went, and she was nan. She was always nan, but nan, if you know what I mean. And um, 
And then as time went on, she almost started to struggle to follow conversations and, um, and names of people and sort of almost like planning of days and events. She'd need to set herself reminders. Um, but she never ever changed from being my nan, never. Never, ever. And she was always the first person there in any situation. And she remained that. And you know, as time went on, um, she did begin to get more forgetful. And um, to my heartbreak, she had a few accidents in her house where she fell down the stairs. And you could really see that she was starting to struggle with coping. And without going into the full details, because that's my nan's private life and her legacy. She was diagnosed with Alzheimer's and, um, but do you know what? I was, and I remember one day saying it to my nan and I was staying with her and it was late at night and we, we'd gone to bed and, um, nan came into my room and, um, bless her heart, she thanked me for staying. And um, I said, Nan, can I talk to you? And do you know what, every time of the day it was, she said, of course you can, my love. And I, and I said to her what they thought that she had. And I think Nan had been told at this time with one of her daughters. And um, Nan didn't believe it. She was adamant it wasn't true. And um, Nan said, talking absolute rubbish, my love. She said I could jump over their heads. I thought, do you know what? This is rubbish, this is all lies, my nan's fine. And I'm not sure how, for how very long after it was. Do you know what? It was almost, I suppose, I was in denial looking back on it. Um, and nan and I handled things together. Do you know what I mean? If she slipped in a conversation, I had her. Sometimes, do you know what? I used to be able to plan things for her, so if she slipped up on things, she didn't need to. Um... She was always okay because I was there. So, do you know, after time, um, and cracks started to show where I couldn't kind of cover things so much. Um, and it was apparent that something was changing in the kind of, the excessive kind of repeating. And it was never a problem to repeat anything to her at all. Um, but losing track in a conversation and saying something and it getting worse um, and her repeating and I think there was one time and you know I was going to say that but I'm not going to say that I think when she started to get a little bit mixed up with the relationships of people then I really really panicked but I always said to my nan do you know what because when all this started, and Nan was a bit concerned herself with her memory, she went to the doctors, and um, it was a family doctor who had always looked after my Nan's family and my grandfather. And um, he actually said that it could have been stress and it could all be too much for her and to take time to look after herself and that she could be a little bit down in the dumps with things. And that's what we thought. And then here we were, dealing with... Alzheimer's and, and Nan had dementia. <clears throat> and uh, I always made it my vow in my mind that I would always, I would always be by Nan's side, always. And do you know, 12 years Nan lived with that. 12 years. You know, we had some incredible times and do you know, my mum and me and her still enjoyed such an incredible bond all the way through her illness. And we were there always, as well as my brothers, um, my uncle and my aunt. Some of her family couldn't cope with it, which I always struggled to understand because now I'm still going through it regardless. So I put my own emotions aside. And, you know, I always, always said, and I'd say this to anybody, that... If your loved one has dementia, or if your loved one is facing 
any of those type of dementias. Of course, being several, my nan had Alzheimer's. I know there's Lewy body, there's vascular, all heartbreaking illnesses. And we know that that person is, we know things are being robbed from them. Those illnesses rob so much of our treasured loved ones. And things get difficult month after month, year after year. And I, I watched the struggles with my nan. Um, but she still had a life. Do you know what? She still always had a life. And, um, yes, she had Alzheimer's, but she was always Nan. If I'd give anything to have her back. Do you know what? It wouldn't be fair for her to be, to have, for me to have asked her to have continued with the illness. Because it just wouldn't be fair. But now she's with her grandfather and her daughter and her son and her mum and her aunts and her sisters and her brothers, all in heaven. Sounds incredible. But you know what? And I would say it to anybody. I don't know what came across in my heart today to do this clip. But I know the month just gone is Alzheimer's Awareness Month. Um, but I think it doesn't matter what month it is. Let's raise awareness. Let's talk about it all the time. Because it's happening all around us. We're hearing so much more of it. It's frightening. And it's very, very real. And the prospect of any one of us facing that is very, very real. But you know what? My nan had Alzheimer's. But she never once stopped being my nan. And even when, sometimes, she would struggle at it's not always, but later on in her illness. And she'd sometimes struggle with a relationship. I would be my nan's memory. So, and I know that she would worry. And I could see it in her eyes sometimes that she would worry. And sometimes I'd be doing her hair or my mum would be helping her with her clothes or, or, or whatever it was, whatever we were helping her with. And um, sometimes mum would pop in the bathroom and get something for Nan, or or I would um, go somewhere to grab something and come back, and my Nan would go, oh, I didn't know you were here, my love. And it's just how quick my Nan's kind of ability of holding on to memory became, to then it was that she really didn't have too much of a memory. She could remember everything from long ago, and then eventually that became confused, and changed um, and then she struggled to at the point where do you know what that happened it started I think around 82 Nan was very very um, able-bodied and her agility was incredible um, when she had a fall at 86 she had a hip replacement at 86 and I think Nan was in hospital for about six weeks. I was there every day with her. Um, I was my mum and there was a cousin of mine and my uncle and my aunt and my brothers. And we got her through that and Nan recovered. Um, and I can remember, do you know, even after that, because Nan loved to dance and sing. And um, I can remember dancing with my Nan, which is one of my most incredible memories. And her laughter, she had the most infectious laughter and a smile, and she was so happy. And you know, I thought, do you know what, my nan may have Alzheimer's, but do you know what, we're having fun, and this is incredible. And I would say to anybody, enjoy the blessings when you can. And it was like doors, doors would close, doors would open. Sometimes I'd be talking to my nan, and doors would close, and it would almost be like a cloud would come over her. Other times it would open, and she would be be able to recall things as quick as anything and as sharp as anything and then other times she would struggle other times she'd be very talkative other times she'd be very quiet and withdrawn and you know what I think as my nan and my nan remained that way up until about 90 I remember my nan's 90th birthday and I walked into the lounge and she was all done up to the nines and she was absolutely just looked stunning like out of a film and Nan always wore pearls, and then she'd double them in the front. And uh, I can see it, and she had beige on. And she looked really, really beautiful. 
and I bent down to my nanny, she was sat in a chair, and I said, Nanny, because I always called her Nanny, and I said, Nanny, it's your birthday, I said, happy birthday, and um, I said, you're 90 today, and bless her, she, she sniggered and laughed, and she said, I'm 80, and not 90, and we laughed, I've never forgot that, and um, that was such a lovely day, such a lovely day. And do you know what? I've still got the privilege to see some of my nan's birthdays into the early 90s. And then, of course, COVID hit, which was heartbreaking. Heartbreaking. Um, my nan lived in... I always called it a retirement home for people with memory problems, and that's how I want to call it. I always hated the word care home. Always hated that. And my nan had a beautiful apartment, and it was lovely. And it was large... And she had her own bathroom and it was lovely, en suite and it was lovely. And we done, I, every season I used to change it, pictures and ornaments and everything like Nan had at home. And I was always changing it. Fresh flowers, my mum and I would do all the time, pictures, and that's how it would always be. So it was lovely and I looked after her very well. And I would visit my Nan as much as I could and it would be every week, every Sunday, without foul. And sometimes if I could I would go in the week, um, sometimes if I could I'd go in the evening. But we always seen her regularly. And we built up such a, a rapport with the people who looked after her. And thankfully, Nan had some incredible people which would look after her. And as Nan's illness progressed, she had a lady, um, lady, bless her heart, she was called Melanda. And she would dress Nan and she would look after Nan in exactly the same way. And, you know, she would have a hairdresser and they would look at a picture of how Nan used to be. And they would go from that. And um, it was always incredible. And we were all, um, always truly, truly grateful. And... Um, so they looked after my nan throughout COVID, but it was hard because I could visit her, but through glass. So I couldn't actually hug my nan for a while. And it was until we got to... Nan was really, really great, really great with the... And she managed the Alzheimer's, almost like she stuck two fingers up to it. She really, really did. And then as we got... 91, she was still okay. She was really slowing down. And her communication, I would say, time she reached 92, was starting to change. And she was struggling with words, I would say. 93, she became quite quiet, but there would be days where she would still be really quite talkative. But when she hit 94, she became very reserved, very quiet, and very tired. And the days for now would be quite short, because she would have to go and rest. But... Most days she was always done up to the nines, dressed, and looked, she was always my nan, always looked like my nan, always my nan. And when I found that she struggled, or she needed prompting or helping, we did, we never made no fuss of it, we never made it was an issue, because it was nan. Regardless, it was nan. And, um, I'd always buy her things and gifts. I remember the Christmas before we lost her, the manager of the care home snuck me in. And this was the time my Nan was so stressed because she couldn't have her hair cut. And it had grown all down to here. And Nan had tons of hair, very glamorous. If you could imagine 1920s, like those victory rolls, and she always dyed her hair, always had medium golden brown hair. And my request by Nan to my mum, when she was much younger and of course had no problems, was that she never ever wanted her to dye with grey hair. She always wanted her hair to be coloured, which was medium golden brown, <laughs> as mum always used to do. For Nan, and she always wanted her makeup. And when she died, she always said that my mum would apply her makeup in her coffin. Sounds terrible, doesn't it? But that's what we done. And um, anyway, my, the manager of the care home snuck me in this Christmas, one just before Christmas. Oh my goodness, I was so privileged, so overjoyed, and I could hold my Nan's hand after all this time. And I could see that my Nan had changed. And without giving her hugs and that stimulation of being right in front of my nan without the glass, I could see there was an effect, but I was determined that we were going to build this back. Because I would always do things to try and exercise my nan's mind. Sometimes doing sums, sometimes doing writing, really trying to keep my nan's mind as active as possible. And sometimes if she would even get anxious or angry, I'd keep going because we were doing it for a reason. But I could see that nan was struggling a little bit, but wow. It was just, I, I was over the moon. And that was... That was December of 2020. And in the May of 21, 
I went for a big operation. I had my groin reconstructed following some honey operations. And I'd seen them lots of times before that I could see that things were getting more of a struggle. But we were planning her 95th birthday. With all the family, we were having um, a big family portrait done. And... Um, I'd had my surgery on the 25th of May. We got a phone call on the Sunday, on the 30th of May. Nan had been taken on well. And I'm not going to go into that. She had been taken on well. And Nan took the Lord's hand on the 31st of May. Yeah, yeah, she took the Lord's hand on the 31st of May. And, um... And it would have been a 95th birthday on the 5th of June. Yeah. So my heart, she always got there. You don't split hairs, do you? Like that, after all those years, getting to that age. But you know what? 95, I'd still say it was far. In my heart, I know, and I know the world we live in. And I know the horrific things, what goes on. And you see little, little children going through absolute hell with health and their parents losing them at such a young age and you see all the violence in this world and all the war in this world and young people losing their lives and families being torn apart but you know i know my nan got to 95 and i am privileged and my heart is full with appreciation for how the lord blessed me with such a life and for such parents and my nan but i'd still say you know it was still far too soon So as much as I feel gutted and upset, I've loved talking about my nan today. I've really loved talking about my nan. And you know what? Yes, I wish I could have so much time with her now. And I wish that she was still with me. But she's gone back to being her true self with her clear mind now with no more clouds over her mind. And she's gone back to being herself with the Lord and her family up above. I wonder what you thought of today's clip. If you'd like to ask me any questions or whatever's on your mind pressing, perhaps you've got a loved one facing dementia. Perhaps you're dealing with a loved one going through a similar journey. And do you know what? The tears I've cried, the heartbreak you have, the smiles and the blessed moments Enjoy those moments whilst you can. And yes, it's heartbreaking. And yes, my friend, we know what's happening. But embrace every second and treasure every moment. Because you know what? My nan did have a long battle with Alzheimer's, dementia. But we had an incredible journey along the way as well. And I was privileged to share that journey with her and stand alongside her with my mum. And you know what? My nan, mum and me... Oh, the laugh that we had sometimes, whether it be from colouring our hair and we'd all have a laugh together and mucking about with Nan and laughing and joking or tormenting her and just laughing about sometimes just anything in that moment or sometimes the gifts we'd buy or when we'd take her out or just sometimes the conversations we'd end up finding ourselves having. It's all so special and it's all so treasured. Yes, it was heartbreaking. It still is. But privilege. And my nan will always be my nan. For eternity. I hope you've... I'm not going to say enjoyed because that's the wrong word, but found today's clip insightful. Thank you very much from the bottom of my heart for sharing this. God bless. And as I say, if you want to... Leave me a comment or anything at all down below. Please do, please do so. Do you know what I mean? It's nothing's off bounds. Nothing's off topic at all. This is a real hard topic and there's no right way. There's no right answer at all. But I think the one thing I do want to leave you with, if your mum, your dad, your nan, your granddad, your aunt, your uncle, your brother, your sister, whoever, if they're facing that journey of dementia, Alzheimer's or any other type of dementia, and you know what? Just always hold on that they are always your treasured person, your treasured loved one. 
your treasured mum, your treasured dad, your treasured nan, grandfather, whoever, they're still yours. They're still that true person. They've just got a cloud over them. Sometimes those clouds pass. Sometimes they grow thicker. And there's easy days. There's amazing days. But there's also hard ones. Just remember, keep going. Because they're still that incredible person. And they've still got a life. They may have dementia, but they have a life. And they're a valid, strong, important individual. Thank you. Bye for now.